I had the pleasure of introducing Shannon to you guys. I told you earlier what Greg had said, we better get comfortable being uncomfortable. <laughs> I was uncomfortable. <laughs> but I'm comfortable now, and I think the board is comfortable now. And I think after you hear what Shannon has to say, we're all going to get comfortable with Shannon. We have to support her because I'm not sure. I'm going to do this when I get home. I'm going to look in the dictionary, and I'm pretty sure there's probably under passion a picture of Shannon. Oh, thank you. She's one of the most passionate people I've ever known, and that's what draws a lot of us toward her. She's going to get this done. I'm excited about our future. I know it's going to work. Thank Anna. you. Awesome. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Here, give me that. Are you that? Thank you. Yeah. Well, if you think of passion, you can definitely tell that Bob exuded plenty of that from the stage. So, uh, yes, all of those ships, little did he know that he would be speaking about all of those. He demonstrated uh, a, a mere 18 years ago at the age of 24 when I took my first president and CEO job of a chamber, not knowing anything of what I was doing. I found a friendly face at one of my very first meetings, and that was in Bob, with Bob. And I've had that throughout my career and, and just think the world of him. So thank you for all of the ships that we have had throughout um, my career. So great, uh, gives me great pleasure obviously to present to you the Envision Twin West uh, platform and really the new strategy of where we're headed in the future. Uh, Greg alluded to earlier the um, leadership retreat that we had in June. So I took the helm here in uh, February Really excited to be back because I started my chamber career here in Minneapolis uh, and what we found here in the metro region uh, was Twin West was always the iconic chamber. It was the chamber that others were aspiring to have. And so for me, it was a great honor when I had the opportunity to come in uh, and serve this uh, chamber. And when we brought everyone together, uh, I, I, I interviewed in a, uh, with a very non-traditional chamber approach. And I'm really grateful uh, that uh, there was enough trust and courage built up uh, to bring me on. Uh, but I was coming from uh, numerous other chamber experiences, 17 years in the industry, four different states, learned a lot about different communities. But just for a minute, um, imagine or envision this. Imagine that this is your community. Because in June of 2008, I was recruited to Cedar Rapids, Iowa, 41 days after this. This was a disaster of ridiculous magnitude. Six billion dollars of damage was done to the city of Cedar Rapids. 5,400 homes were destroyed and 1,200 businesses were destroyed. When I interviewed, believe me, and for those of you from Iowa, I apologize, but when I interviewed uh, being a w good Wisconsin girl, I said, I'm not going to Iowa. Um, but then I realized the opportunity. And even better, I realized that I, my leadership, friendships, partnerships, sponsorships, experience could make a difference in this community, a community that desperately needed something. So when I got there, little did I know I learned the greatest bit of information, uh, the, the most impactful part of all of my uh, professional career came out of Cedar Rapids. Because in the face of adversity, communities came together differently. They came together looking at the fact that I sat not across the table, but right next to what people would say are sheer enemies, right next to labor leaders. Those of you that know, labor and chambers generally don't get along real well. We sat right there every single week. We sat with uh, municipality leaders, sat with faith-based leaders, nonprofit leaders, all with one common goal. The common goal was to rebuild this community better than it was before. And so when you imagine now our future, my hope is that we don't have to have a terrible disaster or huge adversity to be able to sit with one another, build relationships and respect with one another so that we can do great things together. And that's what propels me. That's the passion that we have about the work that we do. I love the Chamber of Commerce work. I think that it's very critical. I sit on two national boards, have great experience and a great network of leadership all across the country. 
And so we're finding that some things are shifting. We have some shifting tides in the work that we are doing. It's the same for your businesses. It's the same for our communities, for those of our municipality leaders here. We're seeing great shifts like globalization, knowing that we're competing in a global marketplace now more than we have ever competed in the past. We have tremendous demographic shifts that are causing both opportunity but also challenge to our communities, to our businesses. And there are significant gaps and roles that we have identified. There are things that we wish we could do better. And the fact that we could come together and leverage assets to make this community better, to make this region better, and doing it all with passion and purpose, as Bob spoke of, but also all with courage and will, because this work is not easy. And so this is the part that um, when we look to the chamber now and the, the future of the chamber, I hope you describe us as a catalytic leader, because I'm not going to go through this whole list of catalytic leadership, but I will tell you we are acting, not just talking about, we're acting in the way of a catalytic leader. So we're focusing on relationships. We're focusing on gathering diverse thought. We're focusing on you, our network. I don't want to be the one that is the, is the champion and cheerleader only. I want all of you to be the champion and cheerleader for this region and for us to come together to work, uh, work together on this. And so out of all of this has come a lot of new. Greg and Patty both spoke of it. I have tremendous support and leadership on our board of directors, and thank you to all of our board members for your significant contribution. But new mission statement, new governance model, new business model, and new cornerstones of work that we're headed into. And so I am really excited to share that with you. But the other thing that I'm excited to share is that there are others, other leaders across the country that are recognizing this. On the national perspective, this is a, a, a quote that came out of um, a white paper that I, I helped on, an, on the national scope to put together around what are the next um, eight factors that are going to influence chambers in the next 10 years. And catalytic leadership is the eighth one, but I would call it one of the most important ones and a huge opportunity for us. So Twin West uh, embarked on a, a new uh, mission statement. Greg. Uh, thankfully, nicely recited it uh, before, because we were really passionate about having a mission statement that each and every one of you can, can talk about. Because if there's one thing about a Chamber of Commerce, I get this all the time. What the hell is a Chamber of Commerce and what do you do anyway? Well, this is what we do, but we need to make it simple. And the other thing, this is a, there's a big philosophical shift in the way in which we're thinking of, of the Chamber now. The previous uh, mission statement was very member-centric. We are a membership organization. We advocate on behalf of our members. Don't get me wrong. Membership is critically important. It will always be an important piece of where we're going. But we have to operate and think differently. We have to think about the stakeholders, think about the partners, think about those that, we can, um, that, that may not join our organization but are impacted by the work that we do. And so that common shared mission is growth and prosperity. We want a vibrant region. We want healthy communities. We want a great education system. We want workforce that wants to stay here. And we want businesses that are successful. So together around that shared mission, that's where we come up with this mission statement. And if you notice, it includes communities, it includes people, and it includes businesses. We will always be pr promoting and protect protecting business. That is a really critical part of the work that we will do. We will continue to be the business advocate. But long gone are the days that in order for business to succeed, the community needs to fail. Or in order for business to succeed, we can't invest in people. That's just not the case anymore. We don't have to have a winner and a loser in all of this. Instead, we have to collaborate and partner and come together for this. So that's the part where I'm really excited about that new mission. But with a new mission comes a brand new governance model. And the governance model is different, I will tell you, and I'm sure that whole comfortable, uncomfortable thing, um, pushed a few of our board members. Because I pushed them to say, I want our board of directors to represent our community. I want us to have uh, diversity of thought, uh, diversity in all aspects of type of business, gender, race, all of that needs to be part of our board. But we also need business leaders that can make decisions on our board. 
So the board will be C-level individuals. That doesn't mean corporate. That means C-level individuals, whether you're a municipality leader, a school district leader, a small business owner, a large corporation, a nonprofit, those types of leadership. And we will come together making sure that we are utilizing uh, your time so that we're only coming together on a quarterly basis. And we're coming together for strategy and discussing the vision and how do we work better together to achieve that mission. We'll build out our executive committee so that there's still due diligence so that I'm not just running away with the organization. Uh, there's still due diligence there. That executive committee will do more of the day-to-day -day pieces of that. That's a part we're really excited about. But then we'll also build out those task force and those committees. And we, we may rename some of them because in all honesty, the word committee is not very appealing to our millennial generation. And we know we are very, very dependent. Our future is dependent upon our millennials, our Gen Zs, but it's also dependent upon all of the existing business leadership that's currently there. So that's the new governance model that we're looking at. Uh, the business model also is very, very different. Uh, this is, the, and this is one that, the, this business model is, has been used in other organizations across the country, but it's very new for this marketplace. So we're really approaching this as membership will always be a cornerstone, a pillar of what we are, uh, our funding model. But we're also going to be looking to organizations differently. We're going to be saying, do you believe in the work that we are doing? Do you believe in investing in the four cornerstones? Because then we want an investment from you. We want you to um, um, invest not just financial resources, but also human capital with us in an initiative type of a base, a greater good approach versus a what's in it for me approach. That's, what, that's where we're headed. And in doing so, we're also able to approach different people in different ways. So we can look to foundations that are aligned with the work that we're doing. We can look to public-private partnerships. I have a lot of school district and municipality leaders in this room today. You are critical partners to our success in the future. And I'm really excited about the conversations that we've been having in that regard. So as we talk about the four cornerstones, Greg alluded to them earlier, um, and I call them cornerstones because as you can see, they're interlocked and interwoven. This is not a separate, we're gonna do this and then we're gonna do this. It's all joined together. And by the way, all of you should have gotten a survey this morning by email um, that asked you uh, to, to give us some feedback because we're continuing and, we'll, and we'll, we will continue to gather input and change this model. But that survey also had the executive summary of this presentation, so you can use that, but we'll send that out to you again. I don't have time to go through every one of these, um, and candidly, you don't want me to go through every one of these, uh, but I will, I will assure you that I will touch on a couple of the factors, and I would ask you to, to think about, are there areas that spark interest and passion in what I have to say? Because if so, we need you to be involved. We need you to be engaged with us. So entrepreneurship and small business, I am a lover of small businesses. It's the lifeblood of our economy. It's exactly, it's the, the um, entrepreneurialism. I have a very entrepreneurial spirit. Um, you'll see the chamber doing a lot of entrepreneurial type things. That's the way that I think. Um, but our um, entrepreneurship and small business programming in the past has been somewhat, um, still very strong, great networking events, those are, those are changing as well. We're really looking for how do we be a, a lot more purposeful, a lot more connected. Uh, an example of that is uh, in my previous chamber, we did a, our typical after hours. Business after hours, everyone comes together, you know, and exchanges business cards and whatnot. We were seeing 40, 50 people on average, generally the same people every month coming to these networking events until we did one thing. We said, to Feeding America, that was the first uh, charity that we worked with, we said to Feeding America, we want your board of directors to host the after hours. So we still had cocktails, we still had food, we still had music, but we had it at Feeding America. And what we then did then is said, set up stations, and as you networked, you packed boxes of food. So our numbers went from 40 to 50 on average, there were 357 people that came to that event because people want to make a difference. They want to make an impact. And when we walked out of there packing 21,000 boxes of food, people felt like, wow, and I got some business contacts? 
that's the greater good approach to the work that we're looking at doing. We also know that our small business need a tremendous amount of support as it relates to a trusted group of advisors. And so we're looking at a, a roundtable um, program that will kick off for our small businesses modeled after the Milwaukee um, uh, model. The Milwaukee Chamber of Commerce uh, administers, administers 36 roundtables every year. These roundtables have about 420 small businesses actively involved in small groups just focused on building and growing their business. So those are some of the things. We may be streamlining our approach. We also are navigating right now the ecosystem for the entrepreneurial climate because it is important for us to invest in our startups. And we don't do that all that well in Minnesota. And so we got to figure out, we don't have to lead on everything. We have to figure out who's doing what and how do we partner for strength and leverage assets. When we look at community and economic advancement, uh, economic development is absolutely uh, critical for all of us. Uh, it also looks different for every community. And we have 10 phenomenal communities that we serve the footprint of Twin West. I will tell you, 32% of our investment comes from outside of those 10 communities. So we have tremendous amount of impact and influence in the, in the metro region. But our municipality leaders, I've had the great pleasure of meeting with leadership from every one of those 10 communities to ask the hard questions around how do we build stronger relationships, what can we do to help your city, and what we found from all of that was really resonated in a couple of areas. We need some help with our existing businesses. More outreach to our businesses, and not just having a meeting and saying, hey, how's your business, and what can we do to help you? But doing the follow-up, doing the hard work, creating the relationships and the value so that those companies want to stay here, and they want to grow here. That's, a, that's something that the, is perfect alignment of the work that we do. So we're figuring out how do we create a partnership that reflects that. When we look at advocacy and public policy, without a doubt, the foundation that Twin West Chamber has been built on. Everybody I talk to, if I ask them, what do you think of when you think of Twin West? Advocacy and public policy. We are still very, very committed to advocacy and public policy. If you read the Star Trib yesterday, you saw I had an op-ed in, in the Star Trib. We are still very passionate about the work that we are doing. But we, are also, we also know there is a tremendous longing for the sane middle. In a world where polarization and fragmentation have seemed to take over, there are a lot of people that are coming to the chamber saying, Can, we just need to get something done, and I get it that we can't get it all done. We need you to lead us, convene us and help us get to where we need to go. We're really committed to that. And we're committed to it, we're committed to enhancing and growing our local aspects. So we're gonna do a lot more of cultivation and identification of candidates, because that's important. We need good people running for office. School board, city councils, state representatives, federal. It doesn't matter, we wanna help that in that role. So that's kind of the, some of the areas that we're focusing on on advocacy and public policy. And the final um, cornerstone, and one that I think chambers across the country have a tremendous opportunity to impact is talent and workforce. Every single one of you, if I asked you right now what one of your top challenges are, if it's not your first, it's definitely your second, the ability to attract, retain, and develop people. And it doesn't matter what size business, it doesn't matter what type of business, this is a huge issue and it is not going to get better. So we're looking at programs all over the country that are looking at talent and workforce. But our, we're building them out in a few different areas. K-12 is probably one that I'm most passionate about. I, I see some of my educator um, leaders here. Um, so a few things that we're going to do around the K-12 piece, because we've already had numerous meetings with our um, both public and private school districts. So the first is um, actually implementing a technology software that seamlessly connects you as business leaders or community leaders with educators and with students. Now more than ever, our students are self-navigators. They're looking for career exploration opportunities on their own. Our educators, our teachers, are ever more challenged, and we need to give them some resources. So by using technology, we were able to identify that, hey, if if I'm willing to speak in a classroom, job shadow, internship, I can upload my profile, my company's profile that can then be searched by every educator and by every student. Opportunity for all. 
So now it's not just those students that are at the top echelon of their class that are getting access to this. It's access for everyone. There's equity in that. And it creates a future pipeline for us. We saw in our previous my previous chamber, 62% of all internships turned into full-time positions. That's a big deal. So that's a, one area we're really committed to. We're also really committed to a student leadership program that identifies students with leadership potential and invests in them. This doesn't mean you have to be the top of the class. This means if you have a, a potential, a passion, and a hunger, we will invest in you so that we can help you be the very best leaders that you possibly can. The rest of the talents pr perspective really is around um, diversity and inclusion. There's a tremendous need and want for leadership around diversity and inclusion. We want welcoming and inclusive communities, welcoming and inclusive businesses, and there are chambers across the country that are championing these types of efforts in their community and they're doing it really, really well. So we're really passionate about that part. We're really passionate about the general leadership, whether it be women's leadership, and we are forming great partnerships with women leadership groups here. I know both WIN and Team Women are in the audience. This is a big deal. They do great work. We don't have to duplicate. We have to leverage. And so whether it's women's leadership, it's professional leadership, it's our millennial and Gen Z leadership. Those are all things that we're looking at investing in. But in all of that work, there has to be tremendous alignment. Because if you read this quote that came out of that white, that white paper, if we bring these, this type of leadership together, it's really powerful. And it's more powerful than we, than we probably even realize. So now, if you have seen this, you'll have to see it one more time because I am so moved by the brilliance of this little guy that um, we'll just let the video speak for itself. I think we all need a pep talk. The world needs you to stop being boring. Yeah, you. Boring is easy. Everybody can be boring, but you're good at that. Life is not a game, people. Life isn't a cereal either. Well, it is a cereal. And if life is a game, aren't we on the same team? I mean, really, right? I'm on your team. Be on my team. This is life, people. You got air coming through your nose. You got heartbeat. That means it's time to do something. A poem. Two roads diverged in the woods. And I took the road less traveled. And it hurt, man! Really bad. Rocks, thorns, and glass. My pants broke. Wah! Not cool, Robert Frost. But what if there really were two paths? I won't be in the one that leads to awesome. It's like that dude Journey said, don't stop believing. Unless you dream stupid. Then you should get a better dream. I think that's how it goes. Get a better dream and keep going. Keep going, keep going, and keep going. Will Michael Jordan have quit? Well, he did quit. So he retired. Yeah, that's right. He retired. But before that, in high school, what if he quit when he didn't make the team? He would have never made Space Jam. And I love Space Jam. What will be your Space Jam? What will you create will make the world awesome? Nothing if you keep sitting there. That's why I'm talking to you today. This is your time. This is my time. It's our time. We can make every day better for each other. But if we're all on the same team, let's start acting like it. We got work to do. We can cry about it or we can dance about it. We were made to be awesome. Let's get out there. I don't know everything. I'm just a kid. But I do know this. This is everybody's duty to give the world a reason to dance. So get to it. something that will make the world awesome. Play ball. So we are very excited about where we're headed, but we will not get there without you. So please find a passion area and figure out how to support us.
we're going to need, this is a lot of work to do. Uh, we're going to need financial resources. We're going to need human capital resources. We're going to need passion. We're going to need leadership. We're going to need all of those aspects. But I will tell you, you have a very committed group of volunteers in our board of directors, and you have a tremendously committed staff. This makes me tear up because they are so passionate about this work. And so many times we don't thank the people behind the scenes. So I know Patty recognized my staff, but I want all of them to stand just one more time because I would not do this work without this fabulous team. <laughs> Small but mighty uh, we are. Uh, but we promise you this, we will make mistakes. And some people said, oh, I don't know if we should put the word mistakes up there. We will make mistakes. They will not be intentional, but we will make mistakes and we will learn from them. We will also make tough decisions and I'll, I will guarantee you, you will not agree with all the decisions we make. But I hope that you have enough respect and trust in us to know that we are making the tough decisions to better the overall region. And we will make a difference. So we'll learn together, we'll grow together, and best of all, we'll prosper together. I thank you so much for your time and your commitment in being here. I apologize that we ran over a little bit, but now it's time to celebrate. We have cocktails just outside the door. Please stay and share your comments with us. You'll also get a, a little bit of survey information. Um, please fill that out. We want constructive criticism. We want to know from you what resonated, what didn't. Are we on track? Are we not? But more than anything, thank you for this great opportunity to lead such a great organization. Have a great day. Thank you.